Welcome back to episode four of our trip around Europe. We're mixing things up in this episode as Therese has finally given me the chance to do the voiceover. On day 12, after another stormy night in the tent, we visited the main attraction in Tours, Chateau Chenonceau, nicknamed the Lady Chateau. This was because its upkeep and construction were managed by six different women, pop-off queens. The chateau was turned into a military hospital during World War I. The gallery seen on the screen now were turned into hospital rooms that had the capacity of 120 beds. Over 2,200 injured soldiers were treated here during the war. There was all sorts of art in the chateau, some caught Reese's eye more than others. I'm sure you know what type of art I'm talking about. The outside of the chateau was just as beautiful as the inside, with immaculate gardens, hats off to the gardener. We then went to the farm area of the chateau where we were greeted by ducks, geese and chickens. Overall the experience was great, well worth the 12 euros we paid each. Would definitely recommend if you're in the area. Day 13 was more of a chill day as we stayed in the campsite and played some football. Overall, personally, the camping experience wasn't for me and I won't be rushing to go again. During this day, I persuaded everyone to book an Airbnb instead of the campsite we had planned in the Pyrenees. Really, they were all as excited as me, just wouldn't admit it. If I wasn't a fan of camping beforehand, the last night made sure I was traumatised. This is a voice recording of the thunderstorm during our last night in the tent. Day 14 and safe to say I was extremely happy to see the back of that campsite. We started our journey starting from Tours to our next destination, Sants, stopping a couple of miles out of Tours for a well needed coffee and pan au chocolat. The coffee was good and the pan au chocolat were freshly baked. Here is Therese's review. Trigger warning, for anyone who hates the sound of eating, Therese really enjoyed this one. Hey guys, just stopped at a garage or petrol place um they had some fresh pan of chocolate we haven't had breakfast we just finished camping possibly worst night's sleep i've ever had um so hoping these will brighten up the mood a bit there you go a look That was good stuff. He, yeah. Mm. Words can't even describe, to be honest. After the night we had, putting that in my mouth, I'm instantly in a better mood. Catch up with you guys in a bit. We continued our journey before finally arriving at the Airbnb. This is where we stayed for the next two nights, a beautifully renovated farmhouse located in the middle of two vineyards. Here's a quick tour of the house. Visually, it was extremely pleasing. However, there were a few downfalls. Firstly, after camping for four nights, we were excited to have access to Wi-Fi. However, after arriving, we found out that this Airbnb did not provide internet. Also, the lounge area consisted of one sofa that was not big enough for the four of us. Other than that, the house was great for a short stay. We paid £114 for two nights between the four of us, which worked out £14.25 each per night, which in my opinion is a bargain. To finish off the day, we headed into Sants before returning to our Airbnb to capture this beautiful sunset.
Day 15, we visited La Rochelle, a coastal city filled with tourists, boats, and lots of seaside restaurants. Paul and Therese were fascinated by the classic cars that were dotted all over the city. With more than 3 million visitors a year, La Rochelle is the third most visited city in France. As nice as it was, there wasn't a lot to do here, an afternoon was more than enough time to see the sights. our Airbnb and on the way to the Pyrenees we stopped in Bordeaux for the day. As soon as we arrived, Chris insisted on trying a crepe from the first shop we saw. Good morning guys, um, we are in beautiful Bordeaux trying out what their crepe has to offer. So this is from uh, Suzette just around the corner, pay two euros for it. We'll see if it's a bargain or not. Hmm. Quite fluffy, yet rubbery. Um, very warm. Took about five minutes to make, so expect it to be warm. Um, I'd give it maybe 7.8 out of 10. We went into the most amazing chocolate shop that sold homemade spreads, including Kinder Bueno and Crap flavour. The Kinder Bueno one was out of this world. We wandered around the picturesque city before stopping in a local bakery for another treat on the way back. It was hard to choose as they all looked so good, however in the end I went for a chocolate chip cookie. Out of ten. I'd give it a six. It's a bit too crunchy on the outside, a bit too baked, you know what I mean? Not as gooey as I'd like it in the middle, but overall a good cookie. Next time we'll be exploring the Pyrenees. Thanks for watching and see you soon.